This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Welcome to KPBM TV and Ace Country Radio's News 25. Today is Friday, March 31st. Well, CEO of Valley Electric Association, Mark Stallions, tells us about how you can save $30 per month if you have a student in school and how a one and a half cent charge will appear monthly on your bill beginning in May for one year and why. Uh, PCA is a, is a, is a, it's a tool that utilities use all across the nation. Every power co-op that I've been in has a power cost adjuster. In the month of December, power costs spiked. They stayed high for a long period of time during the month. We had a similar event in September, but it was driven by heat. If you look at, remember the first 10 days of September, it was super hot, power supply was short, the price of power supply went sky high. So what a power cost adjuster does is it takes those those anomalies that happen that are not controllable and they're not in your rate base. And so what it does is it takes those costs and it defers them out and then it recovers them uh, in a power cost adjuster that, that's on the bill. Now the adder is gonna start May 1st and we spread that 8 million over the next 12 months so that it's not a huge hit. And what it means for members is there'll be a, a, a cent and a half on the power bill from May uh, 23 through April 24 to recover that $8 million. The basic reason for the rate, rate increase is power supply costs. Uh, we went back and, and looked at our, our 2017 costs and then looked at our 2022 costs. And uh, what's happened is the power supply market has, has in, increased millions of dollars. Power supply is basically 55% of our cost. So it's the, the, the biggest part. Of, of, of where our money goes. And if I take a look at 2017, we were spending somewhere around $31 million on power supply. And today in uh, 2022, our power supply cost was very close to 57 million. Budget billing is really a, a good option. What that budget billing does is it looks at what your average bill has been over the past 12 months, mm -hmm. and you would pay that amount every month now it's a rolling 12, mm -hmm. so it adjusts a little bit, but it's always looking at the last 12 months and giving you that average price. The other good program we have is we're working with uh, a, a Lighthouse Assistance Program, and we're also working with Nevada Outreach Training Organization. We just partnered with them. They have a lot of government grants that they've received recently. And so we've partnered with them and we and they manage, they work with our members who are having, who are struggling to pay their bill. Now the last thing we're doing, and this would be on the broadband side, there is a program where uh, if you have kids in school, for example, you qualify for $30 off. Now there's only 200 people on there we estimate out of our 11,500 broadband accounts, there's probably five to 6,000 who qualify. Well, four people have been arrested after the Knight County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant as at a residence on Horn Road. The Knight County Sheriff's Office was alerted to a hit of stolen firearms through the investigative platform called Leads Online. Detectives learned that a male and female identified as Jessica and Kyle Shelton had allegedly sold two firearms to Patriot Pond in Pahrump. According to the report from NCSO, three individuals purchased handguns at the pawn shop with the money from the sale of the rifles. Officers applied for and were granted a search warrant for the firearms 
that were purchased and then transferred to Kyle and Jessica Shelton. The warrant was executed on March 29th at the Shelton residence on Horn Road. During that search warrant, police detained several individuals outside the residence and located inside the following items. One shotgun, two revolvers, heroin, and drug paraphernalia according to police. Another female at the home reportedly told deputies that she went with them to the pawn shop. She knew the pair were felons and could not do the paperwork themselves, advised she had given Kyle her handgun earlier in the day at his request. The firearms that were purchased were brought back to the scene by Kyle and Jessica Shelton via third party. Kyle and Jessica Shelton were arrested and are facing charges of one count of possession with intent to sell drugs, four counts of possession possessing a gun by a prohibited person, one count of conspiracy to sell or transfer a gun to a prohibited person. During a search of the property, deputies located a shed in the backyard which had been converted to a living area. Inside were two individuals identified as Daniel Stepp and Mariah Nogira, who were living in the shed, according to the report. Police say they found hypodermic needles, methamphetamine, a scale, and small plastic baggies that both Step and Nogira have an extensive narcotics history. They were taken into custody and are facing charges of one count to possess and sell drugs, one count of possession of drug paraphernalia, and one count of conspiracy to violate Uniform Controlled Substance Act. Well, the Office of the Labor Commissioner reminds Nevada employers that the minimum wage will increase effective July 1st of this year. Uh, um, Assembly Bill 456, which was passed by the 2019 Nevada Legislature, increases the minimum wage increments of 75 cents annually through 2024. The state of Nevada has a two-tier minimum wage system based on qualifying health benefits being offered to employees for the period covering July 1st through June 30th of 2024. The minimum wage rate is $10.25 per hour if the employees offered qualifying health benefits and $11.00 Um, 0.25 cents per hour if the employee is not offered qualifying health benefits. An increase in the minimum wage will also increase the daily overtime rates for the same period beginning July 1st, except for those employees exempted from overtime requirements under the NRS. Employees in Nevada that earn more than one and a half times the minimum wage for both tiers, $15,375 cents per hour for or fifteen dollars point three hundred three point seven five cents per hour for those offered health benefits and sixteen dollars point eight seven five cents per hour for those not offered health benefits are eligible for overtime at one and a half times their regular rate of pay for over 40 hours of work in a week for employees that earn less than the amounts listed above in addition to overtime pay after the traditional 40 hour week. Nevada law also provides for overtime pay at one and a half time employees regular rate of pay for working more than eight hours in a 24 hour period. The annual bulletins for minimum wage and overtime can be found at labor.nv.gov. News 25 will return in just a moment. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, a man is arrested in Tonabah for allegedly taking tools from a work truck. On Sunday, March 26th of this year, Nye County Sheriff deputies were dispatched to the location of a Chevron station in Tonopah in reference to an auto burglary case. The reporting party advised officers that he ran into a man identified as Austin McGuire at the Chevron station and that McGuire had allegedly admitted to taking items out of his work truck a few days ago without permission. According to the report, Austin McGuire admitted he stole a Husky toolbox containing miscellaneous tools worth $3,530 out the back of the reporting party's pickup truck that was parked at the Tonopah station on March 23rd of this year. The reporting party told officers that McGuire did not have permission to take his personal property and advised he wanted to press charges on McGuire for the theft of his personal tools and toolbox. Sheriff Deputy caught up with Austin McGuire, who, according to the declaration of arrest, admitted to taking the Husky toolbox out of the truck without the owner's consent. Austin McGuire was then placed under arrest 
and transported to the Tonopah Detention Center, where he is facing charges of burglary of a motor vehicle. Well, you might have seen us out there today. KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio join Arby's to do a live remote at their location on Highway 160. During their grand opening event, we spoke to Vice President of Operations, Jason Dunn, to get all the delicious decals on the town's newest restaurant. Oh, it is going fantastic. We're so excited to have the community here. Uh, the, they have embraced us, and uh, we we just have had a great time. The team is excited to take care of them every single day, and we've seen lots of smiles. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, super impressed with the team. We did uh, uh, friends and family uh, last Sunday, and uh, we were able to train some of our management team and staff in our Vegas restaurants, uh, but a bulk of the... Uh, it, 63 plus people that we hired here uh, we actually trained on site and uh, they were uh, prepped and ready to go to take care of the customers and um, after the uh, first opening we we're able to get that double drive through going and actually deliver speed of service uh, once you got to the speaker you were in and out in about three and a half uh, minutes but uh, you know we had to get through the 28 cars to get you there first right so it's not uh, the classic roast beef of you know, the old days, right? So we offer a lot of unique LTOs. Um, we've added a new slider uh, line. Uh, we have our new Hawaiian sweet heat that you probably see pictured behind me, um, as well as, uh, you know, other side items, mozzarella sticks, jalapeno bites, and not just curly fries anymore, but we also have crinkle fries. So um, it is a, definitely a, a, a unique menu uh, outside of your traditional roast beef that what everybody thinks Arby's is. Uh, so including our managers, we have 72 individuals actually working for us. So uh, we've been excited to uh, uh, be able to hire some of the great talent here and uh, just been super impressed with the team. Uh, so we open at 10 a.m. Uh, seven days a week and we close at midnight uh, in our drive through and then the lobby closes at 10. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate the opportunity and we look forward to seeing everybody in town. That was so much fun. Thanks for having us down there. Well, Shelly Fisher has been selling her bagels around town for about two years. The former New Yorker and longtime Pump resident is happy to finally have a home for her famous bagels. We caught up with the funny lady and baker at her location off Highway 372. Yeah, we opened um, uh, just uh, last Saturday. It was our grand opening and we hit a, hit a home run. We slammed it. It's going fantastic. Uh, every day so far, we've sold out. Yeah, you'll never listen if you're if you're in New York or you know you never eat a day old bagel. Okay, so whatever I have left, immediately freeze it and it stays great. I've experimented with these things. Okay, well, okay. Um, I did. I started out with two flavors, you know, just plain and everything, and it grew from there. And uh, I say that bagels are like a tabula rasa, a blank slate. You know, you can do anything with them. So like I have a pizza bagel because I said one day, hmm, maybe if I add sauce to the dough instead of water, and it worked. Um, let me see, I make a jalapeno cheddar, I make a flaming Hot Cheetos, uh, I do some rainbow bagels around the holidays, I put garlic right in my dough, I put onion right in my dough, nobody else does that. Oh yeah, um, uh, anytime you want uh, a special, you know, like a pre-order, it's really recommended, especially because I'm running out so quickly, text me, call me at 775-469-9064, uh, text me your order, or you can call me and I will text you my flavor flyer, yeah. so you know all the, all the flavors that you can choose from, tell me when you want it, what day, what time, and it'll be here for you. And it's funny because when I placed a, an ad, on Facebook, I got a lot of lot of backlash. Oh, you gotta have trouble finding people in Pahrump who work, who uh, who are can pass a drug test. Like, listen, not for nothing. I got myself a whole bunch of raisins. You know, when you buy that raisin brand, all the flakes, I got the raisins. Because we're, we're closed on Tuesday and Thursday, and I don't know if I had a, did a very scientific study to figure out what days to be closed. Okay, I figure Monday people want Monday morning bagels. Wednesday they want Hump Day bagels. Friday they want It's Friday bagels. Saturday they want before shopping breakfast or after shopping lunch. And Sunday they want after church or we're sleeping in because we're pagan bagels. So we're closed Tuesdays and Thursdays. We had been steady since. We got people going to the test site, the detention center. Yeah, so we open at 5.30 and we close when we're sold out. 1190 
East Highway 372, suite number one. And we will be doing sandwiches and stuff. Dee, if you look at my freezer, you'll see there's two hams, two turkey breasts, there's eggs over there, bacon. We were going to do all that stuff immediately, but once that beautiful story came out in the Perum Valley Times, I said, we're going to get slammed. And I don't want us to get caught with our panties around our ankles, you know? So I said, let's just do toasted bagels, cream cheese, butter, and we did it well. If you look on Facebook, there's great reviews. Had we done the sandwiches, it'd be like, oh my God, there wasn't enough meat, and we stood and we waited, you know. Karen, Karen, Karen. That's why I put chocolate, chocolate chips in my in my bagels because chocolate soothes a savage beast. Oh yeah, Shelly Fisher, but also I have a Shelly Belly New York bagels. You can go on there. Uh, that, that's a good place to go and look at stuff. But uh, really, if you want to get in touch with me, just call or text me. And you know, I, I watched a video of this guy in New York. He owns Utopia Bagels. Okay, his name is Scott Spellman, and he's now my hero. Okay, and he was doing some things to his bagels. I was like, I don't do that. And all of a sudden, I, I, I did it, and I said, now, if I could repeat this, and they took my bagels from like a 5 to a 10, yeah. you know? So I, I'm copying a lot of things that he does. So if you call the shop, you're going to get me going, bagels! There you go. Congratulations on your new um, shop. You know she's a comedian as well who performs here around town. When we return from the break, we're going to have your save a pet. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Well, this dog is so sweet. I just love him so much. Sammy the dog is sweet, short, fluffy, and looking for a home of his own. He's available now at Never Forgotten Animal Society. Pat Lemming makes the introduction. Hi everyone, this is Pat with Never Forgotten Animal Society here in Pahrump, Nevada. We are located at 3091 North David in uh, the north part of town. We're off of Bell Vista between Blagg and Leslie. And in my lap right now, I have a wonderful little man. His name is Sammy. Uh, he came to us as a Spaniel Corgi mix, but I got to tell you, I think he's a Spaniel Basset mix, but that, what do I know? Um, but on his uh, rabies certificate, it does clearly state that he's a Spaniel Corgi mix, so that's what we have to go with. He's approximately two years old. Um, he is um, fully grown. Uh, he is a, an interesting mix of Spaniel and, and Corgi, and he is um, kind of confused right now because he has been pulled out of everything he knows, and he's put into here where he knows nobody and he doesn't understand all the chaos and the sounds and the smells and the noises and things. So he is going to take a minute to trust you um, because his whole world has been blown upside down. But when he does, as you can see, he's very calm. He's very loving. He um, is very, very sweet man. He loves his pets. Um, we're introducing him to toys. I don't think that he's ever had a toy before. Um, so we're introducing him to toys. And he seems to get along with uh, other dogs. He is in a, uh, he, when he came in, he was in with 10 others. And he got along with everybody. So this is Sammy. He's approximately two years old. If you're interested in him, please come on in. The adoption fee is $250 to adopt him. That includes his neuter, microchip, all of his vaccinations and rabies certificates. So please come on by when you get a chance. Again, we're open Monday through Saturday from 10 until 5 every day. Um, and you're more than welcome to come in and just pet or get introduced to any of the animals that we have. We have approximately 40 dogs on site right at this time. We have more out in um, uh, um, foster at the time. So please come on in, take a look at what we have. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Look at how beautiful that is with our wild horses out there, right next to the duck pond in Calvada. Great place to spend your weekend with the weather that we have in store. We're going to find out more with John. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios and worldwide on that local BTV app, the app that makes you cool. Better get that. Fernley, 56 degrees, 58 out in Fallon. 
Carson City, a little chilly, uh, 50 degrees out there, but not as bad as Tonopah. 49 degrees makes you the Cool Spot Award winner. Congratulations once again, Goldfield saw 51. It's 59 out in Beatty. Amber goes has got the right attitude at 66 degrees, and Vegas trailing them at 63 out in Death Valley. It's perfectly wonderful, 74 degrees, but here in the paradise of Pahrump, let's take a look. Our current temperature 62 degrees, just a titch off the mark. Today's high of 63 degrees. Winds kindly out of the south, just 8 miles per hour. Very nice day, actually. Sun rose this morning at 631. Setting this evening, look forward about 704. We're heading down to low tonight at 41 degrees. Clear skies. That was kind of a surprise. Supposed to be all cloudy this week. Well, guess we showed them. Beautiful star watching tonight. And as we head on into the morrow, uh, more, more clear skies. It's going to be a gorgeous weekend, actually. Temperatures all the way up to 73 degrees come Sunday. Uh, clear skies, low winds. Uh, Monday going to be a little bit different situation. 21 mile per hour winds ushering in some uh, sideways rain, 24% uh, chance you're going to get wet. Uh, things calm down Tuesday, Wednesday, and those temperatures uh, kind of bottom out there in the 50s, but return nicely into uh, the mid-60s. And I think next week we're going to see nothing but a whole bunch of 70s, so uh, we'll kind of plan for that and look forward to that. In the meantime, not a bad weekend. Hope you all have a great time. Uh, back to the desk. Here's Deanna. All right, John, I'm going to do one of those things that I know weathermen hate. What the heck are you doing with the weather? Wow, that dropped from over the weekend to next week. But i got to tell you, this weekend's going to be great, especially for the Senior Center Pancake Breakfast and the Vine Spring Festival. We're going to talk about the Pancake Breakfast first 7 a.m. until 11 a.m. And that is tomorrow, Saturday, at 1370 West Basin Avenue. Tickets are $5 per person available at the door. Of course, you want to um, get on down there. This is, of course, a fundraiser for the Senior Center. So much fun. You don't have to be a senior. Bring the whole family. They have the best breakfast down there. They're right inside the Sunset Mobile Home Park, right off of Basin Avenue, um, just a little bit west of Linda Street. And, of course, the Vine Spring Festival is going to be held all weekend long. That is at the Vine Community Church, and you want to um, get on down there to David Street. Um, for more information, of course, you will find it on our Facebook page, and that is right off of David Street. It's from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m., and you will see the flyer on our Facebook page. It's at 1130 David Street here in Pahrump. They're going to have street tacos and all sorts of other um, Hispanic food, a bounce house, and all sorts of fun activities. They even have a free Ask a Lawyer services provided by Pahrump Legal Services, which is going to be a wonderful event for everybody to just have so much fun. They are raising funds as well for the Vine um, Church down there. So for more information, you'll find it on the KPVM Facebook page for all those details as well. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Good night.